Welcome, Welcome to Shade and the City. I am your girl, Trace. It's now. Today, we're here for our little sip and shade check, and we got a special guest here with us, a little surprise special guest to do some chatting with us. Maybe we'll bring up some hot topics because I saw she went live today. I don't want to give it away, but I saw she went live today about it, and I want to get her thoughts. But yeah, y'all, so if you haven't already, please, please make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And y'all, we're going to run the intro, and then we're going to bring up our special guest, and I'm so excited, y'all. We we going. We, I don't want to give away on who, but you know, <laughs> let's just say winter is coming. Okay, winter <laughs> is coming. All right, y'all. Let's get into it. Let's get shady. y'all so as i told you we have our special guest here miss well the winter woman we're in the winter woman winter land. woman land right? <laughs> winter is coming but we have the beautiful winter harris we're here with us today thank you hi ladies. yes we really appreciate it i'm honored yes. to be here thank you for having me yes thank you thank you and so you guys know winter from love and marriage or formerly of love and marriage dc i i guess we can confidently say that <laughs> confidently <laughs> okay so you you gave the two weeks because carlos was saying you didn't get the two weeks he didn't get the two, got weeks. two weeks I she, said, she said i gave a resignation letter whether i gave two weeks or not i'm gone <laughs> <Right. laughs> they, they, are, they are fully aware of my exit okay okay yeah. And so, Spencer, I do know uh, from watching other interviews and knowing a little bit about you, you are, like we talked about before we got on here, you're a country girl. Is You said Jonesboro? Is it Arkansas? Jonesboro, Arkansas. Okay. Wow. And then we're in the D, MV. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> She's like, yeah. So, you, yeah, I moved here after college. Okay. Okay. I was going to ask, did you go to school here? But no. So, I, no. I, Mm -mm. So I went to school at the University of Arkansas. That's about four and a half hours away from home. So I grew up in Northeast Arkansas. I went to college in Northwest Arkansas. There I met my college sweetheart, which is the children's father. We got married at 19 and he got signed by the Redskins. That's how I ended up in the DMV. So we moved here straight out of him finishing college there and yeah, I've been here for, oh gosh, we moved here in 20, no, 2005. So I've been here 19 years. That's a long time. Okay. <laughs> Could you see yourself being anywhere else, like living anywhere else outside of here since you've been here so long? This is, this actually is home for me, but yeah, I can see myself living a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. I aspire to have like properties everywhere. That's one of the things that's in my, you know, tree of vision and, and places I want to live and properties I want to own. Like I have a lot of different places I want to be. But yeah, this is this is home. But I, I feel like eventually it'll be by coastal just because of some of the things that I have in the works. Is your is your new okay? The new sweetheart wanting to stay in the DMV. Oh. He's the same as me. He's okay with being bi-coastal. And, you know, just because of some of the things that we both are working on, like we know eventually we'll, we'll probably be back and forth. And then we're looking at some places abroad as well, because I, y'all, when I say there's so much happening right now, there's a lot happening. So I just feel like I'll be a lot of different places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used that used to be my dream too. Winter, actually, that's why I was smiling so hard because I yeah. used to, I want a property here, 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 so I can just go. And I was like, maybe I'll just Airbnb it until, and then when I need to be there, I'll be there. But exactly, that's that's the that's what we're working towards, and things are steadily moving. So I'm excited. It's a Aww. it's a good time to be alive. 
Oh, look at she's so happy. I love it. I love it. I know. Um, okay, so funny story. We got to do a backstory. So we actually have met Winter in person. We've had the privilege. Um, we met, I believe it was July 2022, I want to feel yeah. like, um, at Little Black Books event. Yeah. And me and Nels were saying, I I saw, I think I saw Winter across the room. And I was like, girl, that's Winter. She looked good. With a T at the end. She looked good. Yeah. And then She's I remember. Baddie, y'all. For real. She's a baddie. You know, like, as you see her now glowing, that's like her in real life. Like, I, I hate to say the show didn't do her justice. But like the show doesn't do her just when you see her in person, you're like, oh my God. So and, and we say that because there's some people that we see on screen, and then when you see them in person, in person you're, you're like, like yeah. okay. Okay, girl. <laughs> okay, girl. <laughs> to see someone who you know is like pretty on camera, and then you see them in person, it's like girl. <laughs> listen, trust me, being in this industry, it, just being in media in general. There are some people that are a bait and switch. Seriously. <laughs> so, right. I understand. I but, do. So, yeah. So we went and I remember, I think I was reluctant to go up to her because I was like, what's her not speaking to us? I was like, what are the things that we have said? I said, there is no way. And I mean, we really didn't rip you apart that bad. We did. We just going off what we saw. But, <laughs> look, she was like, mm. but. It was funny because I believe Chanel was the one that went up and like introduced us and was like, oh yeah, we're Shade in the City. We reviewed the show. Da, 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 da. And she was like, oh yeah, y'all talk a lot of <laughs> But she was so sweet about it. And yeah. I will not lie to y'all. At that moment, I became a snowflake. Okay. <laughs> because I just was like, I remember, and I, I say it to her all the time. I cannot understand. And I can understand why some people that we see, when they do go out in the streets, they have a chip on their shoulder. They don't want to talk to you or even interact with you if you're not going to side with them. And I could appreciate, you know, after explaining to her, like, hey, Winter, so what really happened? Or, you know, and being able to ask. And she was very responsive, very receptive, and just really didn't take take it too personal. She took pictures with us. I was just like, do not love her like she's really sweet in like real real life yeah I'm, really, I'm a friendly I'm person like I grew up in the south we don't we're not skittish around people and I think growing up in the church like we were raised not to be by our parents being the first kids of you know the pastor and first lady we were taught to be friendly and welcoming and warm and you were sometimes introduced to people who literally hated your parents guts but we were still taught to be respectful so that type of stuff like and and again i respect bloggers i feel like everyone has a job to do the only ones and trust me you know i have my my faves and i have my people i don't mind if you are like spreading just complete false misinformation. Mm -hmm. And I think one blogger did it about my kids. If I'm not mistaken, something with had to do with my kids. I will never interview with them again. Like it's not happy. Uh, When it comes to stuff like that, like I'm a mama bear. And if you're going to report misinformation and you're not going to recant it once you learn the truth, I get somebody else to do it. I'm not, I'm not ever but when it comes to just not liking me because you watch the show and that's your opinion or you have an opinion, I don't mm-hmm. care about stuff like that. I really right. Don't. Right. But, but just even the not- one. Right. But not just I don't know. I just think to even like want to be like, OK, well, that's your opinion. But like respecting like, OK, I respect what you saw, but that's not what it is. And be not saying defending yourself, but being open to say this is how it really went down. Trust you me. Know what? Even even outside of winter, at that event, there were a couple people that we spoke with from different right. shows where it, it was like already love it was just What's totally you know? different than what we saw on camera. And this is actually when we learned all about editing. And right. I think it was um, not to bring her up, but uh, Camille. Camille, she's on with, our good side. Yeah, we fell in love with Camille because uh, we we got we got on her like girl. How well we how got on her. her? And you know she's the one that really like showed us. She showed us. She's the one that really showed us about you know the editing. So once she learned about yeah, then then you watch the show. Then when you get to watch shows, you watch them totally different. You're like, yeah, I bet that's editing. Like you know what I mean? So (laughs) yeah, you know what? 
outside of that event, we went to the uh, romantication event and saw her there too. And when I tell you, let me tell you something. She was, she, she's just dope. She just wasn't like too high and mighty. Like this is my event. I don't need to do anything. You know, that was the part for me. I was going to bring it yeah. up. She's like working at her own event. She's like, I gotta get this done. I want it to pop off. I want it. We was just like, okay, yeah. Winter's just yeah, you yeah, that's why I said you you got mad respect that day. Cause I remember and I said, Is that winter? And I think you said, I think you said something like somebody, your assistant, or somebody hadn't showed her, whoever was supposed to be at the door yep. handled it. And I said, She is literally because I remember even wanting to go up for you because I was like, This is your event, mm -hmm. and you out here handing out wristbands and doing <laughs> I said. That's how much of a businesswoman she is. It's my event. It's under my name. I got to handle it. And I was like, that's all. Period. So much respect. <laughs> Period. So much respect. Yes. Ain't nobody got time for that. I, there's, you know, if it's under me, oh, it need to be done right. I, like, mm -hmm. my team knows this. I'm really bad about it. I'm trying to get mm -hmm. better at relinquishing control. But in that instance, I think she was running late or something happened. Yeah. And I was like, don't worry, girl, we good. I will hold down the floor until you get here. Like, no. So what's no, your sign with her? I was just about to ask that. What is it? I'm a Libra. A Libra. Okay, you're right. You're right after me. You're right after me. Okay. Yeah. She's a Virgo. Got to gotta love them. <laughs> my mom, my what is mom. Called? And my baby girl are, are, are both Virgos. And that means she loves Virgos. Type A's, <laughs> very particular, yeah, and yeah. organized. Yeah, that's that pretty nice. She can be sometimes, Winter. She can be. But um, <laughs> so, okay. Now, I know, and we got to ask you some questions about the season, sure. of course. But I know you're over it. But here's one thing I wanted to ask. So we did actually get to meet Yusha at the Romanticipation. Yeah, you we guys got did. Meet. He was there. Yes. Um, and and uh, okay, I'm gonna be honest. From outside looking in, it looked lovely. And that was what February of 2023. I feel like yes. Okay, so he looked nurturing. He he was doting on you. He, I, I remember being like, "Girl, winter." You, it, I, I, I left that event. Like, like, Wasn't like he had me fooled too, girl. <laughs> okay, so the, uh, we all kind of know what happened, but from the eyes of someone who actually saw it, yeah, and 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 because y'all said in the reunion it was only four months, so at at what point in the four months was that? Was that the third month? Was that after you guys came back from the uh, Deep Creek? Or, the romancipation. Yeah. So the romancipation would have been after we got back from Deep Creek. After. And see, that's what I'm saying. Y'all look so good. Like, yeah. So I think it's so funny because I think back to that time and I tell people all the time, like we were dating when you date, the job is to collect data. And mm -hmm. I think, unfortunately, because the audience obviously gets a snapshot, you guys see us at an event, that's a snapshot that right. does not detail our, our entire interaction. And mm -hmm. I'm sure Every couple loves to put their best foot forward. You don't want to okay. leave with your issues or your problems. But to be completely transparent, he and I literally had communication issues. We had conversational chemistry, not communication and chemistry. Like okay. he spoke Chinese, I spoke Japanese. <laughs> we did not, like I'm so serious, like little bitty things were very, mm -hmm. very difficult. Mm. And he had a side and I had a side and we never had a very easy time trying to connect those dots. Aside from that, little bitty things were starting to occur. And as God is my witness, I have a, a text to Sherelle. I have a text to one of my best friends. And I told them, I said, something happened. I'm a little iffy and he's giving me opportunistic vibes. Mm. And I said, before you heard him say what he said about uh, you being a good opportunity. Yes, this was before. So you already had that vibe. Yes. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And a lot of it had to do with him asking me specific questions about scenes. How, what happens in scenes? Do you think, do I think they would be open to letting him do a scene? And I'm, I'm thinking like, why is that your focus? Like, mm -hmm. A, I'm already very antsy about 
having you on camera. This is the mm -hmm. first time I've done this. This is the first time people are going to be seeing me with someone outside of the BS I went through season one. Right. So for me to be talking about promoting yourself or promoting your business is too soon. Mm -hmm. You have to think of context. We right. have legit only been dating for a couple of months. Official for one. Why do you care about promoting your business on this show? Mm. So you're leading with your intention as it is. Mm -hmm. Now I can take ownership. I'm a I, now. If anybody knows anything about Libras, baby, we love love. Okay, like yeah. we gonna feel all the feels. That's trust me. A Pisces knows. A Pisces, Pisces knows. knows. <laughs> My boo is a Pisces. Pisces. Oh, girl, that's the best love you're gonna ever have in your life. Who said her boo? Is, your boo is a Pisces. Who is a Pisces? <laughs> love you gonna ever have in your life. You're gonna be loved. Don't ever let them go away. You're gonna be love sick. <laughs> Listen, see, they're, they're, you guys are romantics. Mm -hmm. Such romantics. Anyway, not, we ain't talking about him yet. We <laughs> can. Look, we don't gotta talk about the old news. We can talk about the new right. news. We're we okay. talking about the new news. This, this will get send me down a whole rabbit hole. So, all that to say, so the bigger question people have for me is like, why did you tell this man that you loved him? Well, honestly, as a Libra in my mind at the time, I felt like I was That's feeling all the feels. Yeah. I was saying what I said. I felt you. I wasn't judging you. I wasn't. I was like, I get it. But as you start to learn and grow and get to know a person, the real things start to come out. And for mm -hmm. me, our communication was too hard. The opportunism was a real issue for me because, again, I'm betting real time. I've never done reality TV with somebody I've dated before. Like, right. I'm literally trying to figure out, like, okay, you said you're here for me. Let's see what the situation is. But little by little, he's introducing the ultimate mm -hmm. goal. Yeah. So that kind of st stood out to me. Deep Creek, the way he handled Black was also iffy to me. Let's talk about editing. They edited to make made it, make it seem like my issue was with Joy. Joy mm -hmm. had nothing to do with my issue. Like, Joy and, and Clifton wasn't even in the house with us. Mm -hmm. I didn't know she with Joy and Clifton. Joy and I were good. Clifton and I were good. I'm like, no, why, why you didn't speak up for your friend when you over here telling everybody you got firsthand knowledge that this man didn't step out on his girlfriend? Why? Why? Why, right. why are you waiting until the camera stopped rolling? That was my issue with him. And that did rub me wrong and it upset Black. He okay, so, you so you should knew that Black never cheated on his wife. Or Absolutely. Yes, correct. And he said as much. They cut all that out. Him and Black legitimately got into a back and forth at that cast trip. Mm. And they didn't air it. So when I saw it played back, I said, oh, okay, y'all going to run with this mm -hmm. me and the Silvas against the Tylers and the Petties. Mm -hmm. That's what y'all are trying to set up. Mm -hmm. Well, not even that. To your point, um, I don't know. I personally didn't care for how Carlos was kind of like trying to shut Sherelle down at the reunion and wouldn't let her speak. And yeah. I was, I, I literally thought that. I said, because it doesn't go with the narrative that you're trying to paint. So let Correct. me shut her down. Correct. And and because she's new to reality TV, she I mean, she just she didn't know a lot of stuff, you know, so right. she was very irritated. And honestly, her and Carlos almost got into it because she was like, pissed. like, no, you're literally I it's real. It was real. I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, no, I see what you're about to do. And that's not OK. This is the first time we've been able to really speak for ourselves. And anyway, so that was my issue with him. Had nothing to do with joy. I was cool with joy. Um. Once Can I ask like, what happened that made the tides turn? Because I don't, if I'm not mistaken, you and Joy aren't cool anymore. So I wouldn't say that I'm not cool with Joy. I would say she's not cool with me. And that's because I said she needed to clock in after confessionals. Okay. I mean, clock in, clock in during confessionals. Clock in outside of confessionals. Like I right. tweeted this little rundown of where I stood since the last part of the season aired, I said, Ashley had no business telling Joy's business mm -hmm. and Joy needs to clock in outside of confessionals. Right, because she, she only says something in confessionals, right? Correct. And that, that was my honest assessment. I really wasn't trying to be shady. I'm literally giving my rundown. I said something about everyone in the cast. She unfollowed me from that point forward. And then the next interview she did, she said that I dated everybody just to try to have somebody that, to date that's on the part, show. 
Okay, and that's what I was trying to figure out. I said, where did that come from? What would make her say that? Right. I was like, I'm so confused. But her and her friend both were like throwing insults from me saying that she needed to clock in out. They both were upset that I said that, not knowing that I really was given like my honest opinion. Everybody has an opinion on everybody. Right. Right. We're in a reality TV show. Everybody mm -hmm. has an opinion, but I wasn't really trying to be shady. Actually, she had no business telling Joy's business. But I think the bigger issue is that it got picked up by bigger blogs. And people in the comments were agreeing. Because it was true. That's the only thing I can think. Like, other than that, nothing's occurred. I don't see these people outside of filming. Y'all got to think, I don't live by anybody on this cast mm -hmm. at all. I, I'm not going to run into nobody at the grocery store. I'm not going to run into anybody, anybody at the gas station. I'm not going to run into anybody at the mall. We do not live in the same area. I live a good I'm hour. You over there in that good, rich, loud county, ain't you? That <laughs> good, rich, loud county. That's what it gives me. She out there. <laughs> That's where I am. <laughs> literally where I live. So for me, it's like, I can't point to an issue. We don't, I don't see them to have an issue. It literally stems from that. Other than that, we were good. I was like, ain't nothing super big occurred. Like we ain't had no run-ins, no fights. But I feel no like, didn't Carmen basically tell her the same thing? Yeah. Her, her, her bestie? Yeah. That she don't speak up? You only, basically, yeah, you only talked in confessionals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I feel like since season one, the weird disposition that I feel like I've gotten from a lot of people on this cast is that I'm the punching bag. I am to be seen, punched, and not heard. Mm -hmm. And the fact when that you I'm back, then you're going too far. You're going and too I, low. And I'm messy. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all can go play on somebody else's playground. That's not the way winter runs things over here. <laughs> and I'm never in this night, this life, nor the next, ever going to sit here and let people talk crazy to me. So if you're going to dish it, you better put your, your gloves on and be ready to take it because I'm going to dish it right back. Can I be honest? You are great, though. I, I really, I'm going to be honest. I was very, very sad when you're like, I'm not coming back. I'm not coming back because I'm like, she has mastered. I don't think maybe because you didn't know what was going on season one. I didn't. But... You have mastered the nice, nasty girl. Yes. And I'm, and, and I'm, like, I'm like, I strive. Because me, if I'm mad, I'm mad. You're going to know it. There is no. I think that's, that's what we kept on calling, kept on what right. we saying about nice her, nice. all that. She, she is just, she, she is the definition of niceness. Because, you know, it, in the country, that's what they, you got to be nice, nasty. And right. I'm like, with her, yeah. that, with her, she is, she could be but nice, you know, nasty. It's it's a it's a southern churchy thing because mm -hmm. this is where a lot of times where I really have something not nice to say and I'll be I'll be like bless your heart I'm really <laughs> trying to, I'm trying to like hold my tongue like that is a, it's, it's like we know that though it's like you're like yeah. you, it's like yeah, see you 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 basically said f you and then I like, <laughs> So you know what's so funny? Ashley gets on me about this. She was like, people think I'm the mean girl, but they have no clue that you <laughs> just literally say whatever. And she said, you'll say something so nasty and then smile right afterwards. <laughs> you do. Like, what did I do? Like, well, I don't know what I said. It's because, but yes, it's the way it comes across. Like, you actually have to listen to what you're saying to know that, like, yeah. That girl, that's a little shade. Like, right. oh. but no, I, 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 I started picking up on it, and I would then I would go. I always told the audience, I'd be like, I'm gonna slide in Winter's DMs, and I'd be like, Winter, what is going on? <laughs> she'd be like, oh, let me tell you. Let me tell you what really happened. <laughs> I, you know, I think probably since season one, I that is probably the thing they hate the most about me is that I talk a lot and I tell everything, and and they're supposed to be an air of mystery because that is what keeps these storylines afloat. Mm -hmm. But I just refuse to play ball. Like, no, I'm not going to go along with some storyline when the audience is missing a huge chunk of chunk of context that will explain maybe why this person responded like that or why this person mm -hmm. had that mm -hmm. reaction. Like, no, nah, we just going to tell the whole truth and shame the devil. Get somebody else to lie. 
But I will say, I think at least I can only speak for me, but I feel like people like you enough or realize like, oh, she's like genuine because even I, like you've told me things in the DMs and I'd be like, I'm not going back to repeat that. Like, unless Winter says it, but I think it develops a trust and rapport. Like you can just fire off and I could go, but what is that? You know what I'm saying? So I think that, and, and that's what I'm saying. I don't really feel like unless you go out and do a live and you say it, I don't see too many bloggers repeating something that you, unless they watch the live that you did, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and, I'm going to be honest. A lot of that has to do with my integrity. Right. I'm never going to say anything that I know for a fact isn't true. You better believe I have receipts of said conversation or interaction or incident. Like I tell people all the time, like people have feel a way about the guy I was seeing on the show. I'm like, y'all can feel whatever way, but don't ever push me to pull, drag out them receipts that I have stored away. When I tell you I do my homework, and that's the one thing Monique was like, do y'all know winter keep receipts? Winter does keep receipts because people lie, and I don't have time. <laughs> well, I'm just proud of you for not calling him hips. Um. <laughs> I did call him. Actually, one of my questions, I was calling him hips. I did call him hips. <laughs> But let me ask, let me ask you look, I thought it was, and it, here's my shady part. I thought it was the muslin thing that got you. So, oh, you did <laughs> ask me a question. So what was the final straw? I'm so sorry. Right. We got off track. So, okay. <laughs> like, Lord. I, I love this story because I'm like, he was what? I mean, I guess everybody can be a believer. I'm going to let her tell. Let me go ahead. Okay, so when I we started dating, people always say, well, when are this information? Well, we did talk about beliefs, and he said he was a believer. So it was a friend of mine who actually told me, she said, girl, he's Muslim. I said, no, he's not. <laughs> he's, he's not. Like, we read the Bible, we pray, we talk about scriptures. She said, Winter, I have a friend of mine that used to date him. He's Muslim. So I asked Black and Sherelle, I was like, is he Muslim? They were like, no, we're Christian as far as we know. Our friend is like, y'all need to check y'all facts. That man is Muslim. So I was like, okay, we got to have this conversation because <laughs> I cannot know what you are. So anyway, I asked him, I said, you know, this lady told me that you are Muslim. Is that true? He says, see, I don't really like to have religion conversations because it just, it, I've never known it to go there. <laughs> Y'all know when they start doing that, I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. here we go. He was like, I, he was like, I mean, I'm a believer. Like, I'm a Christian. I know the Bible. I read my Bible. I read my word. He was like, but I do read the Quran. And I follow the principles of, of, the, of the Quran and Muslim culture. Like, I really consider myself Muslim for real little bit of Christian, a little bit of Muslim. I read both. And there's that's principles. Why, that's why I said Muslim. That's why I meant that too. Janelle's going to be like, what are you talking about? And I was like, you got to go watch the live. <laughs> you got to go and watch. And I said, I have never heard of Muslim. I've heard of a lot of things. <laughs> but Muslim isn't one of them. And he was like, well, I don't have a problem dating Christian women. Christian women have a problem dating me. And I because said, well, confused. And you're talking on the phone. So you can't leave. So what am I following? You're putting me in between a rock and a hard place. So I really tried not to judge that in between, but the straw that broke the camel's back was on the Savior's resurrection day. <laughs> oh gosh. I had a sleepover. My youngest daughter invited his daughter and Sherelle's daughters over for this sleepover. It was the, the night before Easter. No, Friday. Yeah, all Easter weekend. So Friday to Saturday. All that to say, he called me the next morning. This was Saturday morning. He said, hey, what y'all up to? I said, we're getting ready to do an Easter egg hunt. He said, no, nah, we don't do that. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> right. That's what I'm doing over here. I'm mean, not what you do. I, cool. right. I, I really kind of thought my daddy was in Nashville, but okay, you know. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah, we don't do no pagan holidays. Y'all need to find something else to do. Like, we don't do that. That's, that's, no, nah, we don't do that. Look at I that. Said, <laughs> I said, it's, it's Easter. 
He was like, yeah, winter. I mean, all this stuff is pagan. I was like, it is literally Easter. Like, it is. I don't, like, I don't like to have religion conversations. Get off my line. I said, aren't you Christian? Don't you celebrate the resurrection? I said, you don't believe Jesus rose again on the third day? He said, do you? Mm. Woo. I said, I absolutely do. That's why we're about to be he said i don't believe jesus raised from the dead any more than i believe that mary had a baby what happened to you being a believer what happened to you being half right i said you know what this is not gonna work i said we are unequally yoked <laughs> I said, I have tried to be understanding, but this is a, a literally the foundation of my personal belief. And this is just not going to work. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And he was like, come on, it ain't that serious. I was like, oh, no, it's really that serious. It's that serious for me. Like, no, I'm good. And you're basically infringing on an Easter egg hunt that a three-year-old, because Sherelle has a, a, a young daughter, yeah, young who's daughter. excited about this Easter egg hunt. So I used to keep um, or babysit. Sherelle's youngest for her when they would go out of town. That's my that's my baby. This baby want an Easter egg hunt. You're not going to sit here and tell me that your daughter who is 14 is going to trump a three year old expecting a, a, a Easter egg hunt. You can call her and talk to her and explain to her that she can't participate. But this baby is having an Easter egg hunt. I cannot tell a three year old all of a sudden. No, you can't have an Easter egg hunt when we've prepared her to have. He didn't, he literally was not for it. And I I broke up with him that day. And that was the end of it. He did write me like a few days later and was like, after I get done with Ramadan, I would like for us to have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm after I get done with Ramadan, I would like for us to go through the fire. I can just see, I can just see her like, like, what? Like, <laughs> I said, boy, I said, listen, I we have been exclusive for three months, dating for four. I'm not going through the fire with nobody. Right. After three months of exclusive dating. I'm good. I wish you well, though. So that's how we end it, y'all. So so when we get to reunion, by, by this point, I don't think he knows this, but like my friends are starting to tell me stuff about him. The producers have reached out and told me stuff about him. Women are sending me things in my DM. And I'm just like, my issue is not that we broke up. I don't care less. I don't want you. And by this point, me and my new guy have been dating for four months by the time we filmed the reunion. My issue mm -hmm. is that I feel like you played in my face and you wasted right. my time. So, so you yeah, found out all this stuff after you guys broke up. Yeah. I know you're done with Love and Marriage CC. Yeah. Right. But is it because it's Love and Marriage CC or is it because it's reality TV? What if they wanted to do, I don't know, life in, you know, Winter Wonderland, Winter Womanland? Uh, are, are you done with reality TV? I I don't. I, I'm very careful to never say never. But what I can say is I'm done with this type of reality TV. I don't believe in this genre of reality TV because my, and this is my opinion and my perspective is that it's never about really building your business. Okay. It's a little sprinkle of building your business with the majority of it being drama. Mm -hmm. And to me, the exchange is not worth like the trolls. It's not worth the negativity. Right. It's not worth the drama going on set and going into these scenes. is like going into a pressure cooker. You never know what to expect at any given time. You can go from zero to a thousand. You can show up thinking that it's going to be a great event and something crazy happens. Mm -hmm. I don't want to live with that type of stress every time I go into a work environment or a job. And mm -hmm. it's, it can get like this season got very toxic. It was a very, Dark season, social media was a mess. A lot, of, I mean, pretty much. We know all of us. Joy didn't even show up. We know. Yeah, <laughs> pretty, much, to film. <laughs> pretty much all of our cast was fighting. Right. I'm just like, aside from that, like this, like I said, there's no boundaries. Even when I did the interview with Queen Sheba, I explained to her, I'm like, there's no boundaries, there's no protection. There's no parameters for what is allowed or what isn't an, isn't allowed. There ain't no HR department. So if there is an issue with the colleague, you don't have any place you can go complain to or file a complaint with. 
It's just a free for all. And mm -hmm. when you learn that that's the case, the ROI is not worth it. Right. At this point, you just have to be on there because you want to be seen. But I can be seen in other places and not have the amount of stress that I would have. I can mm -hmm. be seen in other places and actually get something lucrative out of it. It just has not paid off. And again, do y'all know how many things we filmed that don't make the, make the cut? We well, filmed. I heard about the prom situation, but to your point about yeah. businesses, you said, or I, I heard you mention that Monique thought you would be great. Well, you were supposed to be on the show with the other ex and that, you know, that hit the fan right before you were supposed to go on. Right. Um, but one thing I will, uh, you said something about you being a public, like you were a well-known public speaker. And I said, I don't think we ever heard that nor knew that. Because no. even when you said you were a PK kid, I said, was that ever brought up on the show? I don't think anybody ever mentioned that. So if you think about it, people at large have no clue about what I do. Right. That's what I'm saying. And that's why I was like, can we talk to Winter and get the like, because when yeah. you did one live and I was like, oh my God, you do so, like I said, I slid in your DMs and I was like, I didn't know you did this much. Because they yeah. never showed it. Exactly. So for me, if you're saying that this is an opportunity for me to market and showcase my business, yet you cut out every opportunity that will do that, this is there's no point in me doing this. Right. I, nobody right. wants to be in drama every day. And we, we film four and five and six days a week sometimes. This is essentially like a full-time job. Yet, again, it's not helping me in any way. Anything that I've gained or any growth that I've had is because I bust my butt. People will tell you, I work hard. I really, really do. Outside of this, I juggle a lot of hats, including being a full-time mom. Like there's no off days. And so I'm like, I can live without it. Listen, I was on there. Nobody will ever be able to take it away from me. When they look me up, I'll always be associated for those first three seasons. Moving onward, I have bigger and better aspirations and there's other opportunities I want to pursue and I can't until I get away from under this year exclusivity clause that we have. We have to wait a year before we can move on to something else, um, especially if it's reality TV related. And I, I just I, I would rather cut my losses now. If they carry on, they carry on. Child, they talking about bringing hips on. If they bring him on to each his own, I hope he has a great time. But I'm not gonna miss it. I heard he was married, just between you and I, I heard he was married right now or something like that. In the I believe so. I so from what I understood, he had a baby on the way and was engaged. But you know, in their <laughs> own days, <laughs> they believe in um getting married very quickly. So people like to judge me, but I was like, you see how how huge the double standard is. I get a lot of flack for saying that I love him. People forget that he said he loved me back. So why aren't you questioning him? Mm -hmm. If it's an issue that I said it, why isn't it an issue that he said it? Right. I also get flack for moving on. Well, he moved on. And not only did he move on, he got somebody pregnant. It wasn't like we've been broken up for a year. You got somebody pregnant at about three, four or five months after we broke up. Most mm. people don't make babies within three, four and five months of meeting them. Woo! There go so, that night. <laughs> night, night. night, night. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, hold on. What's my fan when I need it? Is it? Is it? My, 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 my. <laughs> I'm just saying the double standard is that men can do it and nobody will question it. But if a woman mm -hmm. does it, she's looked at like she's crazy. But moving onward, I, I don't miss it. And people are like, oh, Winter's never going to find anybody. Well, Winter's had somebody for you know, almost 14 months now. Winter has moved on to the finer things in life. I left it because it was broken. I didn't want it. So you can have it. It's available. Okay. <laughs> well, look, 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 this, this negativity. That's right. Look, look, look let's, let's talk about what you have moved on to, Winter, to the bigger and better things. Okay. Let's, look, what? <laughs> She's like, what? I'm not a broke digger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> there are people who would think I was a gold digger and I said I'm not I, I mean if I was a gold digger I would have never given him a chance well here's my question to you and it, so it, I don't know if it's life lessons we all learn things as women as we get older different experiences whatever now I know a lot of people felt like season one like how did she not see this with Kevin how did she not see what was coming 
And, and I will say, you seem like a woman of high standards. Like, no, I like this and da da da. So yeah. I was even telling Chanel, I said, how the hell did she fall for Kevin? Because it seemed like he wasn't, how was he able, if he didn't have, how was he able to fake it for you? It was, so, all, it's it's really all it wasn't. so it's interesting. And I think the only way that people would be able to get real context is if I were to put together a, I hate to say this, if I could put a whiteboard up, <laughs> literally like do like a, a picture representation of all the people who were involved with him i was his third wife okay his first wife was an accountant his second wife was a u.s patent attorney his third mm -hmm. wife was me who was an entrepreneur and influencer and public speaker i would say there's a pattern here and if a u.s patent attorney fell for his bs okay He's very good at what he does. <laughs> very well, good I just couldn't understand because wasn't he like, or at least the storyline was like, he was living in the basement or something in Georgetown, but it was Georgetown. And I was just like, I feel like Winter's the type of woman to be like, especially if it's COVID, okay, you buy me and my kids a house and we'll move in together and da, 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 whatever. So I was like, how did she even, unless it was just COVID, how did she settle for that? That's what I couldn't understand. So- you also have to consider the area. In the DMV, basement apartments are not uncommon. A lot of people live in basement apartments here. That's the cost of living is insane. Most people yes, it is. I give you that. Right. So because the cost of living is insane, you say you live in a basement apartment and you are taking me through your basement apartment. You're showing me your son's room, your room, kitchen, living room, bathroom. Okay. Why am I questioning something I'm looking at? Okay. That doesn't make sense. And it's COVID. So we're not going over each other's houses. This is like on FaceTime. Yes. Mm, okay. Perfect storm. And mm -hmm. I also, this is the other tidbit people don't know. I have two autoimmune disorders. I could, I was not like medically. You were not playing. Okay. To go over people's houses. So people are like, well, why didn't you go? Uh-uh. That was not, I could not. Like I was considered high risk during COVID for that. Yeah. And I was on medication that suppressed my immune system. So he... It was like literally for someone like him that that is deceptive. It was a perfect storm. You caught me in the middle of COVID. You saw me your basement apartment. I know you prior to this to be a man of God, upstanding. People love you. Speak well, the people that I knew. People love you. The people that are around you are, are upstanding. It wasn't until we got married, his mask fell off that. I'm starting to connect the dots like some ain't adding up. But that makes me think that you really liked him and it had nothing to do with his money to that point. You really did so like what? So, yes, you're very correct. What I liked about him and where we connected, because we argue like cats and dogs, I'm going to be honest. Uh, we didn't connect generationally and I wasn't necessarily attracted to him. He wasn't attractive. Like for a young woman like me, I'm not seeing him and being like, oh my gosh, he's right, so right. yeah. Not like I do over my boot now. Like that, that joker is fine. Like that's what? Not <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's be clear. It wasn't when you attract it, it makes a difference. Okay. Um, so that was not the draw, but people also have to consider where I am in my life. I am full blown in ministry. I am serious about walking in my purity. So I am seeking what he's presenting as far as being a man of God. He's meeting me on that Christian level. So we hook, line, and sink. Are you courting me like a woman of God? We don't think about looks and sex. That's not what we're going after. So right. if you could be supportive of me building my ministry, you're um, sowing seeds to help, you know, provide for certain initiatives that I have going on. You're supporting my books that I'm writing. I'm seeing you as a good upstanding man of mm -hmm. God. And a lot of my friends are like, yeah, he's older winter and we know you don't like dating older, but maybe you should give him a chance. He's really mm -hmm. strong. You let your friends get you. <laughs> you know what? You know what? You know what you're giving me right now, Winter? You're giving me like Sierra. Like, like she found her Russell Wilson. Like, like Sierra, you know, she had her little bad egg, but she knew when she found out that they was bad, she left them. She did not yes. stick around. She was like, you know what? I'm I'm done. Absolutely. And she found her Russell. Correct. Look, did, so you, did, you, was... did you do a Lord's prayer for, for, for your Russell? 
honey, if I did the Lord's prayer for my Russell, it was not the Lord that responded because of what I got. So I don't know what that was, but <laughs> I would just say, so the, the guy I'm dating now, it's interesting because he's a PK as well. We have a lot of similarities and okay. things in common. All that to say, I feel like, okay, we have the old man situation and I went through therapy and I was in therapy the whole time. Um, really just trying to piece together like what the hell happened and how did I get here? And so the backstory is I got married at 19. For 15 years, I was married to my children's father. And when you're 19 getting married, you don't know who you are. You don't know where you're going. You're pretty much just, an, you're just assuming the position. And for me, that position was wife and mom. So mm -hmm. once I divorced, and I was like 34 at the time of our divorce, y'all, this is a whole new world. We done this is the birth of Tinder. People are online dating. Okay, Cupid. Right. Okay, Cupid it in 15 years. So you're you are essentially taking someone who is green as grass and yeah. throwing them to the wolves. Yeah. So my therapist described it as I didn't really date for love. I didn't really date because I was um looking for Prince Charming. I dated to get back where I was comfortable, which was marriage. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. Oh, I like that. Go ahead, therapy. Go ahead. Right. Once I understood that, I understood why I settled for Kevin because he was safe. Mm. When you think about someone who gives off the appearance of I'm crazy about you, I'll do anything for you. You can have the world. I can forego love for the sake of security and getting back to where I'm comfortable. Okay. And that's what he presented at the time. Now that fell through like a mighty Russian wind, but I that was not not a mighty Russian wind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. So I had to take ownership of that, and I feel like I tell people this: um, dating the rapper on the show was a good test of whether or not I had learned my lesson. Was I going to settle for good enough and what people perceived as good? Or was I going to listen to my gut that was telling me this was not a good situation and be able to say, you know what? It may take me a little bit longer to find the person that I'm meant to marry, but I'm willing to walk away and see what the run on and see what the end is going to be. I'm just saying. So for me, I feel like this is why I met my new guy because I was ready to meet him because I was able to make good decisions. Yeah. Right. I could still be dealing with the Muslim because people thought he was good. Does not mean he would have been good for me. You see right. what I'm saying? Like I had yeah. to pass the test and I feel like because I passed the test, I really got a good one this time. Um, so can I ask though, I noticed on the reunion, you said that y'all had, you know, done nasty. And I said, Oh, and I said, well, what I was she didn't confirm or deny? Well, my thing is, I thought I thought it was beautiful because I said, for whatever reason, she had discernment. Whatever reason she didn't, she knew Yusha was not it. She took mm -hmm. her time and she I did. And but for whatever, and I, I just wanted to know as a woman, what is it about the new man that made you feel so comfortable to be in that? Because you were on that, like celibacy, I'm not doing like you were really <laughs> on that. It's so funny. So people are probably not going to like that I'm transparent and honest, but I, I tell people all the time, if I'm going to be hated for anything, I'm going to be hated for the truth. And that's what I yeah. prefer. Um, so for me, when it came to Yusha, I'm not going to sit here and act like y'all. When you are dating someone, you're going to feel all the feels, including being sexually attracted to them. Being right. abstinent does not mean that that stuff gets turned off. It just means that you have self-control. Right. All that to say, I kid you not. And People can say I'm crazy, but I promise you, God told me no. Like, don't you do it. No matter what, don't you do it. And Great, girl, you better listen. I'm so serious. So we literally, I have that text saved. I um I text him and he asked me, he said, So you really not gonna give me none? I said, I know you may not understand this, but God told me not to. Under no circumstances will I ever sleep with you not gonna happen it's no ring on his finger you ain't getting none he hmm. was like seriously seriously <laughs> single-handedly is the best decision i could have ever made because i feel like in retrospect he would have threw that in my face yeah 
I really do. I really do feel like he would have used it against me had I went ahead and did the nasty. So I'm glad I didn't. Fast forward with this guy. So I, the crazy part, and it's crazy how God works. And I feel like it's it's almost like biblically poetic. And there's a, a scripture in the Bible that says, like, I set before you a choice. You can either choose life or death. Yeah. I feel like that's what happened with me with Yusha and my new guy. I met my new guy the day before I was introduced to Yusha. Literally. Mm -hmm. And I met him at a random networking event. I was booked to speak <laughs> at a networking event. He showed up. He was there to do business networking. And the DJ would periodically say, hey, turn to the person next to you and introduce yourself. Literally, the DJ says, turn to the person next to you and introduce yourself. And we were standing next to each other. And he introduced himself to me. That's how we started talking. Okay. So we, we started talking and he was like, I see you're on the panel, but I what's this love of marriage DC? Like, I don't watch reality TV. And I'm like, oh, Lord. So let me explain. So I'm kind of explaining reality TV to him. And he was like, wait a minute. I think my boy is on that show. And I was like, well, who's your boy? He said, quick. Oh, okay. I, said, oh, I, I, you I know, and honestly, <laughs> you know why I love this so much because I've always said I've told Winter, I've told Ashley, I've been in both their DMs even since season one, and I said if you and Winter could ever get on the same page, find y'all are forced to be reckoned with. So the fact that they got booze that are close to nowadays, I love it. <laughs> I'm still here because I saw it. I met. Yeah. It's true, but I didn't want to get, I was like, oh, well, let me just put all my little, because when I saw him, I was like, oh, he's handsome. Like, that was my first thought when he turned to me. But when he said he knew quick, I said, child, no, I'm good with it. This, <laughs> like, like, this will never work. <laughs> yeah, like, I was like, oh, Lord. He was like, yeah, me and quick headed to Houston this weekend. I said, mm, okay, well, y'all have fun. He was like, well, let me give you my card. He was like, I would love to connect when I get back. Maybe we can figure out some business synergies if you have some context um, that you could share. And I'll definitely bring some context that I could share that would help you and what you're doing. And I was like, okay, cool. Do so, you think that was game or was he serious? No, he was dead serious. Oh, okay. He was dead serious. So I met Yusha the following day um, because the, the Duncans introduced you know him to me at the podcast. He and I start connecting, of course, because we're we newly met, but we're not official. So this is him calling me right now. Give me one second. Oh, Hold on. I'm so sorry. Baby. Hey, I am on an interview. I'll call you back, okay? Hey, baby. <laughs> hey, no, but I keep her going with. That is sorry, so cool. Oh, sorry. Exactly. You know, that just reminded me of the whole um Angela and uh who did, who did the dude she was dating? Remember remember when um oh, yeah, Yo Gotti he was, was yes, Yo Gotti when he was like doing an interview and Angela oh, called she, <laughs> yeah, so, 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 like, you know it's free. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, I love um, it. oh gosh. So like two weeks later, he reached out to me. He said, Hey, are you down to meet in Georgetown for coffee? And I was like, sure, that works. So we meet up in Georgetown for coffee. When he walks in, I'm like, I don't give all this. <laughs> so I'm, I'm huge on a man not only being like clean cut and a little square, yes. but I love a dude that can dress like mm -hmm. that has style. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when he walked in, he walked in in this trench coat. I was like, oh, what's your relax? down and I was telling him because I had to film that day I said I have 30 minutes and I gotta run to be on set and he was like yeah no worries it shouldn't take long so we just started talking when I tell you I didn't realize two hours had passed by two hours <laughs> my producer like oh I'm in traffic I'll be there as soon as <laughs> I love it it was a mess so um <laughs> He was like, I'm so sorry. This is so unprofessional. Like, I don't even know how we got off into all the things we were talking about. Like, are you open to meeting um, the following Monday so we can really get down to business? I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Like, no worries. Like, it was good getting to know you. So we meet up again two weeks later and y'all another two hours. And I'm just like, like. There's no problem with the communication there. 
No, no. <laughs> still be friends. Like clearly, I'm like, I feel like I have known him forever, and we are finding out we have all these things in common. He's a church kid. I'm a church kid. He's been married before, like I have, and we were just sharing. So I got an invite to go to um, a holiday party that Carmen, um, she was the event planner for. It was for, for Santana. And so I, I literally, even though I was talking Santana's to Santana's her boo, right? No, Santana um, played for the Redskins. Oh, Santana Moss. Santana Moss. Yeah, okay. Santana Moss. And so I didn't feel like the event was Yusha's type of vibe. So I reached out to him and I was like, hey, I have a plus one. Are you down to go? It's a networking event. He said, mm -hmm. sure, I don't mind. <laughs> I said, all right, sounds good. So that's how you supposed to date. Look, <laughs> we weren't dating. That's the crazy part. Like, no shots have been shot. We are literally yeah, no shots have been shot. No shots have been shot. It was, like, it was just all good vibes. It's good vibes. So literally, I was like, it's a Christmas party. You got to wear holiday colors. And he was like, well, what color are you wearing? And I said, I'm going to wear red. He's like, okay, I'll figure out something that'll complement the red. I said, no problem. We never talk again about what we're wearing. But during this time, I'm losing a bunch of weight. So my red dress didn't fit. So I switched to a green dress, but I don't feel the need to tell him this because, again, it ain't like that. Right. Right. So I pull up. He gets there before me. He said, I'll wait on you in the lobby. I said, no problem. I'm getting out of ballet now. I walk in. I kid you not. This dude is wearing a green suit. So we are going green. We, this is how crazy my life is. Looking we, like y'all showed up together. We walked upstairs in this boxy coordination, boxy twin coordination. <laughs> Y'all, tell me why somebody I used to date is standing at the top of the stairs. I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. What is happening? So I text my friends and I'm like, you will not believe who is in this event. And I am with this man and we look like a whole couple right now. I said, he, locked in, locked in. Like, child, his feelings is hurt tonight because he thinks I don't want to be here with a new man, not knowing like this is completely unplanned. Anyway, we had an amazing time. A couple days after this is my romancipation. I invite him to come. But at this point, we're filming. And so he was mm -hmm. like, yeah, sure, I'll drop by to support. Well, of course, this is the first time that the audience gets used to introduce to Yusha. Mm hmm. So you should but this is the first one. This is not the one we went to. This is the first Correct. one. It's okay. the very first one that we filmed. So at this point in his mind, he's like, oh, she has a boo. She's not there. Okay. We definitely are just friends. So she has a boo. It's cool. You don't broke his poor lord. And, <laughs> and look, us Pisces take that seriously too. We'd be like, all right, we just back up. We just back yep. up. He absolutely fell back. I personally fell back because we had so much, like, we just clicked from the beginning. And I was like, well, I can't do, if I'm going to seriously, you know, be over here, I can't dibble over there because we got too much spark. So I can't do it. But what I will say is my interaction with him provided a lot of context dealing with the rapper because <laughs> I just literally... <laughs> There go that nice nasty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it provided a lot of context for me because I was like, our communication is so hard. Yet I met this person out of the blue and our communication is so easy. seamless. Like it, it just doesn't make sense. And I think for him, he never understood why I went so hard with our lack of communication being so difficult for me, but he didn't know I had a really good barometer that mm -hmm. I was like, no, nah, it ain't supposed to be hard like this. I don't care what anybody says. Like, this right. is really, really hard. So, of course, you guys know what happened with Yusha. We literally broke up the day before Easter. A few days later, this man, now we ain't talked in probably a month. We would check in and say, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. He texted me and was like, um, hey, I hadn't checked in in a while. Just wanted to say, hey, I haven't checked in in a while. He said, I just caught a live that you and your boo did. I love black love. I just want to say you look happy. Congratulations to y'all. 
I was like, well. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't my boo no more. <laughs> About that. Uh, yeah, we not together no more. And he was like, what? So because this is our MO, like it was so easy to talk to him. I basically go into this explaining like, yeah, it didn't work out. And I said, you know, it's cool. No big deal. It's not like we dated forever. It was only, you know, three or four months moving onward. And I said, you know, I'm really shocked that you never shot a shot because I had a little crush. I ain't going to hold you. <laughs> what the shot? <laughs> what is we doing? And <laughs> Okay, I'm grown. I, and when I see what I want, I know what I want. He was, like, he was like, why didn't you tell me? I said, why didn't you shoot a shot? Like, I don't understand. He said, you know what? I can fix that. What are you doing in a couple of weeks? He said, I have to go out of town. But when I get back, I would like to take you out. I said, I might be free. Let me check my calendar. <laughs> you are. I love it. I love it. I might be free. I don't want to act too available. You know, I said, I might be free. She gets on me about doing that. I'd be like, yep, I'm ready to go. No, no, I might be free. Let me, let me, you know, I have my people call your people. We'll see. But anyway, we went out a couple of weeks later. I kid you not, that was April 20th of last year. So we have been rocking and rolling. We have never stopped dating since we became official like six five no five months later so we dated for a while i just didn't want to rush anything even though mm -hmm. i felt like we were feeling all the feels and we definitely obviously um clicked and had you know real a real bond we didn't say that i love you until I was, that was my next question when did y'all say that i love you yeah we didn't say i love you until Five months later, five months after we started dating. And it's so crazy when I tell you we went to Jamaica together last year. We went to Beyonce together last year. Like we just had a lot of great moments, but we both were really scared to rush. So we just were really kind of slow footing and taking our time. And yeah, right before my birthday, we both said the, the ILYs and Aww. became official and we've been, I, when I say, I'm like, where have you been all my life? This is literally Aww. my, I feel like he's me. He's just a boy. <laughs> <laughs> he just has boy parts, but he's just solid. I, he's a, he's about five years older than me. So I think that's a good age, like not too old, but not too young. So he's responsible. He's settled. He's an entrepreneur. He used to be in the industry, more so on the music side. Um, mm -hmm. So my new song that I just came out with, Fall, he actually co-wrote and co-produced. Okay. Um, so he's a musician and has worked with some of the biggest artists <laughs> in this world. Uh, yeah. Huh? I said, yeah. So he's okay. He's not. He's not like an aspiring rapper. No. <laughs> No, he was actually, so he's done his time. Like he really is. He's so well respected in the music industry. Like, wow. um, in fact, one of his best friends is Taint. Like, I mean, he has toured with some of everybody, but for him, he's done that. Like he's been a part of a Christian boy band that was very popular back in the day. Um, he just doesn't have a need to be in the spotlight. He's done that, but he's very supportive of what I do and does all that he can to cheer me on and offer advice. And uh, he was uh, amazing when we recorded the song, honestly, because I was just like, you used to work with all these people. Like, I don't know, because you you really, you you pushing me in this, <laughs> in this studio, but no, he's great. Like, you, yeah, he's my honey. I don't know. Um, he's he's my love. best friend. Like we say this, people. My our friends will tell you this. Our best friends will tell you that they've been replaced by each. We've been we've replaced them with each other. Oh, I love. <laughs> he's that. away, and this is why it's really bad because we struggle being away from each other. And he was like, "I don't understand why you couldn't just fly out here." I was like, "Remember, I have the kids." He was like, "Oh yeah, you get a pass for that." But uh, we have a hard time being. We like this. And, you know, separately. so he doesn't have any children. He has one. One. He has one. Yeah. Are other kids on the table or? Right. 
Are we Wait. talking about other children, possibly? We want Extended more. This family. Oh, oh, they want more. more. Yeah. What you out here trying to be the Brady Bunch? Okay. She's trying to add a. She's trying to be. The you know what? I love. I love that she genuinely looks happy. Like uh, she genuinely I, looks happy. I, I we've talked about this. I feel like we would. And and I mean, just saying, I, even at thirty eight, I'd be like, oh my god, would I really want to do that? Like I'm like, if I don't do it by forty, I don't know if I could do it again. Cause like, hard to see, but we're just like, I'm in love, but I do whatever he wants me to do. <laughs> so this is the interesting thing. Like I love being a mom. I'm so sad my my littles are not so little anymore. But I've always said I would have more. Things just did not work out with their dad. But I feel like if they did, we would have had more. So my thing has always been, I'm open to having kids. I never tied my tubes at all once I had the four that I had. And I was mm -hmm. actually pregnant seven times. Like I just have four living, but I lost three. So wow. I, it's not that I can't. And I always wanted to, but I just said, I didn't want to do it until I was with someone. I really felt like I was going to be with forever. Like that's just the truth. So um, we talk about, you know, how many I say one is good because I told him we just need to go ahead and throw a girl in the mix because he doesn't have a girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, then we would be even because I have two boys, two girls. He has a boy. And I'm like, if we have a girl, we would be three and three. Mm -hmm. And he keeps talking about, I just think we need to have twins. Listen, sir. Oh, because you do have twins, don't you? Who? Don't you have twins? The devil is a lie. <laughs> I thought two of your kids was twins. That's how you ended up with four. Lies you tell. No, you did. <laughs> look, Winter, you did it four times. And look, don't tell I me you did it natural. And don't tell time. me you did it natural. I did it seven times. Like, not just so in between every kid I have, I lost one. So I did, there was Kayla, that was my firstborn, natural, no medication. My second born natural i did ended up ended up having an epidural she passed away um our son was born next his head was too big i did it natural but i still had to have an epidural because god knows i wouldn't have made it um <laughs> then i got pregnant again we had a boy i lost him at five months oh, i got pregnant with my son my youngest son i had him early at like 35 weeks but natural no medication no like I'm a natural, no medication type of girl. And then we got pregnant again with another boy. We lost him. And we finally tried again for my baby girl. She was born at 29 weeks via emergency C-section. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I would have been natural, no medication. And I begged them to let me do it, but they wouldn't let me. So I'm definitely of the natural, no medication. And if I, you know, when we do it again, I don't want to have medication and I want to have a VBAC. So I want to do a, a natural delivery. You're a totally different breed. Yeah. Totally, totally, totally different. My best breed. friend did it and I the people heard her screaming down the hallway. I just but I she, don't only know. One. she only had one. I went into it one with that one time. Hand. If I can do it, I remember my sister in love was like, Yeah, if you get to like an eight, I mean, if you get to eight and if it's you know, you can just go ahead and deliver no pain. I was at five and was like, give me something or I'm going to pass out on the table. It's not going to happen. So, I, you know, I had a really, really good Lamaze teacher. For whatever reason, her advice stuck in my head. And she kept saying, you need to figure out a really good technique for when your contractions are, are heavy. She said, because contractions work for you, not against you. And she said, mm -hmm. the stronger and closer that they are, you know that you're closer to being done and the baby's closer to being here. So mm -hmm. she said, if you can figure out a technique to work through that and you can see the contractions is working for you, you'll appreciate them hurrying up and coming because you know that you're almost finished. And I was like, OK, I got this. So what I would do, and I kid you not, when I would have a contraction, I would make everybody in the room be quiet. Like, don't say nothing. I want silence. And I would breathe through these contractions. And in the break, when the contractions would go down, the kid's dad would rub the side of my thigh because it relieved the pain that I was having in my lower back and abdomen from the contractions. Mm -hmm. So that was my relief and balance. And next thing you know, she was here. Kayla was like the longest birth 
or a childbirth and thing. It took me 18 hours to get that girl out. And it was just the longest time. Everyone else was super fast. Like, of course, Autumn, you know, she was fast because she was C-section, but I had CJ in 12 hours. I had Eric in seven. Mm. And, and I to had your point, you're right. Because when I had my son, I was going so fast. I went from five to like eight and the doctor was like, let her go. And I was like, no, 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 no. But it slowed me down. And then I ended up being there for like four hours on an epidural. And he would have been, you know what I mean? If I would have just pushed through. I wish people knew that story more. That's what that's what happened to me when I took the epidural for my son. It slowed me down. Down, yeah. And I was like, you have And to then they it. had to increase it. They had to give me the Pitocin. And she's yep. the one that warned me. She said, you don't want that. You no. don't want that. That increased. Horrible. And they gave me that Pitocin. And I said, if you don't give me another epidural, because I can't do it through this pain. Yeah. <laughs> can't do it. Yeah, I, 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 told, I, I said, I would not wish that on my worst enemy. Yeah, they don't tell you that it's worse than real natural contractions. It's not, it's mimicking and all they can do is mimic, but that Pitocin is no joke. I had it with um, my second daughter because again, she wasn't going to trigger real labor. So they had to induce me to have her. Oh, it was God awful. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm definitely team natural and would wholeheartedly do all things natural again, God willing. Um, yeah. And I told him, I was like, listen here, we don't pop no kids out by 45. You ain't getting them from me. Okay. <laughs> there we go. He know his limit. We got a limited window. It's limited, <laughs> but yeah, it would. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. So what is winter working on? I know you were talking about, you used to do retreats and girls trips. And I said, okay, we need to know more about this. Winter, the author, we need to know what's coming next. What's the next romance is the patient. What, what's going on, girl? Uh, so much. I'm trying to keep up. That's what's really going on. So I definitely am planning the next romancipation. It will be this summer. So we'll have an all-white situation. So hopefully you guys can come. Okay, okay. We'll be uh, we want it to be bigger. They have been growing. Our last one was sold out. We did it at a bigger location, completely packed house. I was so proud. Um, so I said, I need some time off to make sure we can plan for the summer and make it right. So it'll be an all white soiree again in the summer. And so that's in the works. I am going back to my girls wellness retreats. Um, so we're working on a location for that. And once I get that, I will drop that. Um, and I kind of want to do more than once, more than one during the year. So we're working out whether or not I'll do a domestic and an international or whether or not I'll do, I'll do both out of the country because I just love to travel. And I think that's fun to do as a group. Um, so yeah, that's I'm summer. Girl. Huh? I'm uh -huh. on it. Like I said, thank God she I'm, I'm, passport. I'm getting my passport this month because when you said you were looking at Mexico and Jamaica, I said she would pick the two places I'm going this year. I said, uh, why can why couldn't she pick the Thailand or the Bali or the? <laughs> well, we are we are definitely still in conversations with a number of different resorts. I that's why I haven't released where yet because I'm trying to get the best deal. It's a luxury vacation. It's right. not we're not going to stay in no Motel Six. We're not going to stay <laughs> at just some random resort. When I tell you, any lady that went with me the first time, we took 25 women to Puerto. Puerto Vallarta. Puerto Vallarta. Yeah. Yes. I'm like, Lord, this country don't be mixing sometimes. But anyway, um, we took 25 women there. When I say women to this day say it's the best vacation they've ever had. Like we we did not spare any any expense. We made sure everything was taken care of. We got everyone's room upgraded. Um, it was just a nice experience, and I don't want to go down. So it's just like we are doing our due diligence to vet everything to make sure we can give a full, you know, vacation. Right. And we want people to have a good time. So that's happening. I'm working on a huge conference in the fall. More information to come about to come about that. Okay. Um, hopefully we are able to bring on a huge sponsor for this. So I'm really pumped. It'll be a big deal for me because I have always done conferences and events. And this will be my first kind of large conference back out there. So um, we got a lot of things in the works. I had a huge be meeting with a local bank uh, for my personal business and uh, growing this YouTube channel, Winter Woman Land is, is getting strong. We're almost at 6K and that's yes. huge because, you know, your girl just started back a month ago. 
So we're almost at 6K in less than a month. So that's good. That's so really I'm really good. excited about that. Um, and I'm waiting this year out because I have other opportunities that I would like to consider and I can't until I'm away from under this, but once I am, then other announcements will be made. Okay. Okay. I love it. I love it. And you said something about some books authoring you. Chow, I am literally, so the single housewife obviously is coming out. I'm in the midst of, we're trying to figure out a book signing event for that. So I want to okay. make that a whole book sign and meet and greet. Um, and I, I, I swoof, chow, I'm like, so is this yeah. like your true story or is this like you just made up like fiction? Like you're just for something for us to read, get the girls thinking like. So the single housewife is an affirmation cookbook. So it's filled with etiquette tips, affirmations and recipes. Okay. So it's a combo book. It's kind of like the first of its kind. It's not too much out there like that, but I wanted to do recipes for the, for the soul and recipes for the body. And, uh recipes for the outers cook because so people ask me why I call it the single housewife because for me I never moved out of the mode of being a housewife I was just single I run my house very much like I did when I was married mm -hmm. a lot of structure in my house <laughs> like a lot of structure but it's still very home me if that makes yeah. sense yeah um so I feel like a lot of women could appreciate that perspective like you don't have to wait until you're a housewife to have some of those principles active in your home as a single. I agree. I agree. So, um, that's just the piece of me. So that's, that's, I don't know. I'm excited about it. And I like to cook. So I'm excited for that to come out. And then I'm also working on another book, but that has bigger things at play. So okay, I can talk about like, I'm trying to figure out a creative way because I can't say too much, but eventually people will know, but I'm working on, two different things, two different projects, but yeah. Okay. And new, I'll begin working on new music. Oh my gosh. It's so much going on. I, I was going to say, girl, you just, the list goes on and I don't even on. get into the contracting part of it. Are you still doing that? Yes. And so that was one of the reasons why I had a meeting with the local bank was to expand my business because there's just so many opportunities. I created two pilot programs that I had pitched to local organizations and it got approved by the national organ. Well, actually international organizations. So in able to launch those, you got to have certain things. So we're working with people to get that structure put in place aside from also starting a new business. Right. I know you can't say too much with the contract and especially if you ain't got it yet. So I, I get it. But it's it, when I say it's a good time to be alive, I'm in a very good place. And um, I just when I say it's I don't regret my time on a LMADC, but I'm happy that it's done. And, um, you know, forgetting those things which are behind and moving forward because. The Ford is where it is. And I'm like, yes. Yes. I love it. You look good. You look happy. And then let's get into, before you leave us, yes. let's get into the shawty of it all. Because I think I didn't get the chance to catch a lot. I, oh. I, 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 mm -hmm. I, I want to know what Winter had to say about Shawnee. Because I know what she said. And she mm -hmm. said, do you know what she said, Nels? Who, Shawnee who? O'Neal. Oh, about Shaq? And how yeah. she wasn't really in love with him or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, I completely understand. But yeah, I do. Oh, oh, okay. It's a I, different time in your life. You, well, you're, no, because people were saying, well, like, that just meant you married him for his money. And that's why I was like, I would want, I would love to know. I, what don't, I don't agree with I don't agree yeah, with that. I don't, I don't agree with that because people have to understand that men and women are very different in their reasons for marrying. And a lot of times, and we talked about this on my live today. So Men often marry women who fit their puzzle. They may not be all that in love with them. They may not think they're the finest thing since sliced bread, but they fit their puzzle. That may, that may mean financially, that might mean aesthetics, that might mean image, but that woman fits his puzzle. Women often marry for security. Mm. And, and it's not just security when it comes to money. It's mm -hmm. security as in family structure, being able mm -hmm. to make sure that you, you're able to have kids in a so solid, stable home. Right. I can honestly say I did that the second time around. I didn't marry that old man because I was in love with him. Are you serious? No, I wasn't even like sexually attracted to him. It took a lot. I tell people all the time. I, I, one of our biggest arguments is that I had to get drunk to do it. It's true. 
It's my truth. It was not easy because mm. that just did not move me like that. Um, and I don't even think I answered your question. You said, what made me make the decision to, I don't feel like it was a decision that was made, but at this point, he him wanted and I, to, he made you safeties, like the yes. bond, some things I feel like when you have safety and a bond with someone, it's a natural progression of expression when you right. are disconnected. So I don't, I don't disagree with her. A lot of women can get to the other side of a thing and be like, you know what? I, I was never really in love with him like that. Like that wasn't what this was. And I, like I was telling him today, I had to be honest and be like, that was the situation the second time around. The first time I absolutely married him for love, probably a little bit more than I should have. Well, and was right. like, I'm surprised a lot of people um, disagreed with her or didn't understand. But you know what also I think it has a lot to do with the fact when, when you get into these serious relationships, when you're super young, I think that makes a hell of a lot of difference. Because like you said earlier, you don't know who you are. You're still learning yourself. And as you get older, I, I tell her all the time, when I was young, I, I, I mean, I feel like I got married like pretty young, but I was always in serious relationships. Right. You don't really know what you want. Yep. You don't know what you want until you're not getting it in a relationship. <laughs> As you get older, you're like, oh, I, you know, I would really like to have this. And, you know, you've been doing this for so long and you're just not getting that and you're expressing it. And then when you finally get it without having to ask for it, without having to express it, and it just comes to you naturally. Yeah. Oh, well, this is how this is supposed to feel. You know what I mean? I feel like I, so. I completely understood where she was coming. I didn't think too, I didn't think twice about it. No, really? I, I can't I relate. All the past that gives her the feels, and I love that she's in love. Like I'm happy that she's happy. But I, you know, I'm always they always jump on me when to because I play the advocate. I, I this the advocate for me. I always gotta look at the other side, and I said, "Well, poor Shaq. How does he feel? How does he feel hearing that?" But you know what, you Shaq? You know what Shaq came out and said? He said. I was a hard person to love. I said, well, damn. I didn't love that he took accountability. I think a lot of you, I, I wish the rapper was like that. Instead of coming out here telling people that you don't know why I have all this animosity, nigga, you know. <laughs> Seriously, like you can't, you can't say that you don't know. You may not know, which you mm -hmm. should know. I got plenty of texts telling you why, but. Does you want to pretend like you don't know? The least you could say is I can respect that she feels that way. And when, and and when they do that, it makes you like, it, it pushes you away even further. It's like, you know what? Yeah. I definitely made the right choice. Right. So I tell people this. People are like, oh, winner ran away a good man, baby. Listen. Mm -mm. I don't have to worry about eating at Irish pubs anymore. I'm good. <laughs> Winter. I'm good. So can I, okay, here's my last question. This is one thing, and I really wanted to ask you about this because I thought it was, I, I've been through something similar. So you talked about how when you were going through your divorce with the first husband mm -hmm. or the kid's father mm -hmm. and your parents had also got separated that were together for 27 years. And my yeah. parents were together for like 23, 24 years. And they literally got divorced the day after my sister graduated high school. Oh. And- yeah. I wonder, I, I, I was like, I want to ask Winter, how did that play? Because I'm so proud of you yeah. for being able to step outside and saying, I need to do what makes me happy and I'm not being treated well, so I need to move on. But do you also think that maybe what you saw growing up and even if, I, I don't know the ins and outs of your parents, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like when you don't see any, I guess, turmoil up front, it's kind of confusing, confusing, especially as an older adult, to be like, well, what the hell happened? Because marriage yeah. is forever. So <laughs> do you think that that played a part in your marriage? Um, my or first marriage? Staying in your marriage? Yeah, staying in your marriage as long as you did. So those are... So I'm going to be honest. So my, my dad did the same thing. He filed for divorce when my baby sister graduated high school. So he purposely right. waited until she graduated. In terms right. Of yeah, it was a purposeful thing. Right. Yeah. It was thought out. Um, so we were blindsided. We really did not know that this was the plan. Okay. So you and me both. <laughs> uh, by this point, we had been married for six years already. 
So we already came into it with the idea that marriage was for life. So them divorcing didn't play a role in my decision not to stay. His inability to stay faithful literally drove my decision. Like, so you would have said you would have worked it out. You would have did what we what we're supposed to do as married people. Uh huh. I absolutely would have. The issue became you have to think from 2007 until 2015. Yeah, 2007 and 2015. So by this point, in that eight year span, yeah, because that's eight years, 2007, 2000, that's eight years. In that eight year span, there are multiple affairs and two kids born outside of our marriage. Mm. I've done all I can do. <laughs> I've done all I can do. I've done all I can do. At that point, it's not a me problem. Right. Yeah. And, and, and the straw that broke the camel's back was after. I had accepted that you had to. I so you were going to roll with him and be family and do the things? No, and... no, 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 no. I wasn't going to be family. You see that? <laughs> I'm no, just asking. No, 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 no. See, that was that was another issue that we were also having issues working through. You went and cheated again, even after I was willing to try to work through those indiscretions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm good on it. Right. There's there's a, there is nothing left to see here. You don't even respect the fact that I have fought to get to this point mm -hmm. and you would still step outside and do it again. Yeah, it ain't I. I'll be all right. I'm gonna figure it out. So from that point forward, my family, I mean, they what my parents are doing have nothing to do with what You're, I, at that point you were like, I'm worried about my own family. Yeah. And I, I, I was worried about my own. um it was killing me. Like the year before I filed for divorce, I was in the hospital for two weeks. I almost died in those two weeks. So I was hospitalized. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. They admitted me to the oncology unit. They thought I had cancer. It was too much happening. My blood pressure was all over the place. They walked in that room and said, you need to get your affairs in order. Because at this point, the way your numbers are, you can have a stroke in here. Wow. I had lost like 30 something pounds in a two week span. I couldn't keep food down. I It was horrible. And literally, I'm like, what is going on? It's stress. All of that toxic they say stress will kill. Yeah. Yes. I learned those two weeks. Oh, you ain't about to kill me. I'm good. At some point, you just got to let things be what they are and move on. So I couldn't even, my parents were never a consideration at all. Mm -hmm. And my dad actually filed and my mom and sisters moved and relocated up here after that divorce happened. Okay. So they, they've been up here since 2008, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so you have family here. Yeah, my yeah. mom and sisters are here, which is why people ask me why I live all the way out in Loudoun. But I'm like, uh, my support system is out here. So it just kind of makes sense to be out this way. But yeah. I just, yeah, it was time to let live and let live. And that type of disrespect, I just, you, you can't, it's too much for a woman's spirit. Mm, like right. we, we wear things on our heart. And once you experience that type of heartache, it's very hard to repair once you are up under it, when people are still committing the same thing over and over again. So I just had to cut my losses, child. I, 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 I left eight years later than I should have. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you said, I think you said you waited for you to get yourself a degree. And that's what I was like. I'm so proud because I was like, she literally, she played the long game. I hate to say it that way, but you know what I mean? It's like, I can imagine being hurt and being like, yo, I really want to get out of this, but I need to make sure I'm set up and straight and what, and not even that. Cause you, I mean, I'm, you were married, so you could have gotten your child support and the alimony and all the, all but the things. You could, but you don't ever know how that stuff is going to play out. True. And I had to think about what does life look like outside of that? Because we got to be real. Child support and alimony don't last forever. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what does life look like for winter? What does winter want to do? Who is with who is winter? Because mm -hmm. I don't know who winter is outside mm -hmm. of being somebody's wife. Okay. And mom. Mm -hmm. So I would say from the time we divorced in I want to say we split in 2015. Our divorce was finalized in 2016. 
So I tell people all the time, what people have actually seen is the growth and maturation of winter. From 2016 to 2024, winter's had to grow up and figure out who she is as a person. And I think I've done pretty darn good. No, we love it. We love it. I think, I think that was a good sum up of, of our time with winter. I love it. I love it. And thank you so much for blessing us. I'm, I feel like we kept you all longer than we probably should. Yes, it's all right. Because we know you got to call your boo back. Yes. <laughs> but thank you so, he's, so like, he's a couple of hours behind, so he's still awake. I'll give him a break. But, but yeah. whenever you feel like joining forces, I would love. We've been trying to get into hot topics more. We would Ooh. love to join the Winter Woman Land and discuss oh, the topics and I'm share just, thoughts on things that's getting going ready. on. I'm getting ready to start a ratchet relationship story time. Okay. And I'm going like to have it. different bloggers come on every week and tell their ratchet relationship story. I oh. got some. I got some. <laughs> I'm sure we all got some. Everybody has a story time, but I feel like relationships are great. But y'all are welcome anytime on my platform. But that's where we're going to start. That's what I'm getting ready to start up because I just. And you're doing, aren't you doing Martha's Vineyard on? Uh, are you reviewing Martha's? <laughs> So I'm getting ready. I to can't have get it. into it, Winter. I literally, I will watch your recap. I just can't get into the show. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> no, ma'am. Go, go try it again. Okay, I'm going to try it again. I don't try know what I'm again. missing, but I'm just try like, I feel again. like I can't connect. I feel like I can't connect. Try it again. And I really want to go to Martha's Vineyard, too. I just feel like these particular, I'm like, I'm just. Try it again. Get, get Try it again. Try it again. <laughs> it started off really slow for me, and I was like, I don't think I'm going to like it. But then it picked up, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm hooked. So I'm getting ready to go to drinks with, Pre with Preston. He and I are going to meet up because he's in the DMV. Okay, and this is somebody from the show. See, somebody this is on the cast. Okay. Yes. okay. And then what I want to do is reach out to my faves and interview them on my channel. But I am obsessed, literally. Aww. Obsessed. They are well, so we, awesome. Well, we would They're definitely awesome. be supporting it. Let us know when you go on. We'll promote it amongst our crowd. Yeah. But yes, thank you so, so much, Winter. So long you long coming, but we appreciate you giving us your time. We really do. And you and your look, we know you about to go on a trip. Enjoy your time. Safe travels. Thank you. Thank Have you, fun. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. I'll see you soon, I'm sure. Of course. All right. Have a good night. Have a good, good night. night. Bye.